Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, this is the first episode I've recorded uh, since the New Year. So we are going to start by finishing, uh, picking up the straw from our wheat harvest that we did in the last episode. And then I think we're going to make a big purchase. Um, and that big purchase is going to be... A large tractor I've been wanting to get a large tractor anyway and one has come up in the sale it's not really the one that you know that I ultimately wanted to get but it's kind of one of those things where you know considering the price and what we're gonna get for it I kind of don't want to pass it up um so yeah let's get the rest of these bales picked up we'll take them over to the farm and drop them off <clears throat> and then I'll show you what's up uh, in the sale and then we'll make a decision I haven't I'm, I'm still on a hundred percent sure that's what we're gonna do but um, yeah we'll see um, now the other thing too is that I am um, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I think I'm about ready I, I really want to start thinking about wrapping up this this series because I have plans uh, for a new series on a new map. Um, so, and you know, I've mentioned this to you guys before too, but it, I, th I think we're going to even accelerate things more than than we have. So, for example, normally what I would do is I would come along now and replant this field with hay, so we get extra hay and we get some green manure, but that takes a heck of a long time to do. Uh, a lot of you know a lot of time in real life too because you know there's there's a lot of off-camera work several real-time hours that I've got to spend in game to to get all that done so what that basically means is we're not I'm no longer going to replant the grain fields as hay fields we're just gonna let them you know um, just leave them be until it's time to replant the grain on them and I'm probably not going to raise bees either. I was originally going to raise bees for the cereal factory, but I think what I'm going to do for the cereal factory is I'm just going to purchase the honey and we and the raisins that we need for the cereal factory. So, um, yeah, that's kind of you know what I have in mind in in terms of accelerating this series so that we can uh, move on to something else. Because you know <laughs> I put out a lot of episodes here in our our inaugural you know greenhorn series here on elm creek and we've done it i've had a really good time with it and i think we've really you know transformed elm creek at least you know the property that we own uh, significantly and it's been it's been a great ride but it's getting time i think you know for us to to move on to different pastures maybe not greener pastures but different pastures uh and so that's that's what i want to do now i can't sit here at this moment and tell you that we're going to have X number of more episodes because um, I'm not sure how many more episodes we're going to have. You know, it could be a couple of more. It could be 10 more. I'm not sure, but um, just just be aware that I am, you know, I am wanting to wrap this first season up uh, and start something new. And I do have some pretty cool plans, I think, anyways, uh, for what's going to happen in season two, but I'm not going to share any of those plans with anybody right at the moment because it's going to be a surprise when it happens. Okay, anyway, um, we ended up with uh, 1.6 million liters of straw after we did our wheat. So yeah, we got a nice little chunk of straw and we'll probably end up selling some of that in December like we usually do because we don't need all of that straw for our, our own purposes. And uh, all right, so here, let's take and park the uh, bale pickup. And then we're going to take a look and see what's on sale. Now, the other thing I'll tell you guys too is I'm not I, I'm not planning on getting rid of this save. I'm my plan is just to end the YouTube series on it, but I'd like to keep the save indefinitely. And you know, there's even a possibility that we could. I could still, you know, play on it now and then and, and, e and even do like an update video just to see, you know, what's how things have progressed, you know, after the series kind of thing. So I'm 
I'm not planning on getting rid of the save itself, but whether or not I actually do anything with it after we end the series remains to be seen. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's all about, you know, not having enough time to do all this stuff, basically. Okay, let's, um, let's go ahead and put the cedar away, too, since we're here. And it's been taken out. So let's see, we've got our our corn planted. We've already harvested our oats. We didn't harvest a lot of oats, but we, we harvested some. So we just really have to wait for the corn harvest, which will be in the fall. And then we can get started with the cereal factory. All right, here is what is for sale. There is a Fint 1100 Vario MT tractor. It has 37 months on it, so it's older, but it's not at the point where it's super old. Plus the fact that, you know, this isn't a tractor we're going to probably use every day, but we are going to use it for our larger fields. Um, so if we click on this tractor and what we would need to do, right now it's on sale for $168,000, uh, which is, what is it, 58% off its, its price, you know, its brand new price. Um, but we would definitely put the biggest engine on it, um, which adds another 673. Yeah, that's the biggest engine. That is, adds another 64,000 uh, to the price. And I think for the tracks, I think we'll just, we, we'll just keep the standard uh, rather than the wide because that has another 10 grand on there. And uh, I don't really see the purpose of that. It's, it's not going to, it's going to, change you know the lateral stability of the tractor but it's not going to really change the traction um i don't think anyways uh we'll go with the american design which doesn't cost anything and of course we're going to want a gps on that well are we going to want a gps on this yeah i mean if we're going to spend this much money on a machine like this we might as well put a gps on it so that brings the price up to two hundred forty eight thousand three hundred sixty four dollars Okay, so here's what here's what I'm thinking. This is a 673 horsepower tractor, um, so big, big tractor for working on big fields and pulling big implements. Um, so so our price tag for this is 248. It is 37 months old, but again, you know, it's not something we're going to use every day. It's not a daily tractor. It's not like our JCB and our, you know, our smaller fit and stuff that we use every day. Um, so if we look at the tractor. I kind of would like to have gotten, um, it's going to probably be this case. This thing is $402,000. And if you add the largest engine and you add uh, the GPS, it's a half, it's over half a million dollars. Uh, if we were to buy this brand new, this is the tractor I, I kind of would have liked to have had, <laughs> but it's just, I mean, it hasn't come up for sale anytime recently and if it ever did come up for sale in the past we certainly didn't have enough money to afford it at that point in time at least i don't think so um i had higher priorities is what i'm trying to say if it did come up for sale and i don't even remember if it did or not but this is a almost a 700 horsepower tractor it's just a monster but that is a lot of money i mean just <clears throat> we could yes we could afford it but i just don't think that's the right move for us at least not not right now um and so, you know, I, I wasn't planning on doing the Fent, but because it is up for sale. Now, if this guy would be, let's see, standard tracks, this guy would cost us 464000 So it's getting close to a half a million if we bought the same setup brand new, um, which we wouldn't do, of course. So anyway, um, that's kind of the decision that I'm pondering as to whether or not I want to actually get this. Cause I, it, it has been in my plans all along to get a really big tractor. And I, I think I've even mentioned that to you guys before. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do it because why not? Let's just do it. Okay. So we're going to get the 673 horsepower. We're going to keep the track the same. We want the U S we want the GPS and we want to put, um, our old guy, a uh, license plate on there. So let's put that in there. I don't know why it doesn't just keep the same license plate I've already had for everything else. 
but it sometimes it seems like it does and sometimes it doesn't i don't know why uh we'll put that on front and back press space okay and where is it on the front did i i told it front and back didn't i front and back i don't see it on the front huh weird okay unless it's behind the weight maybe i don't know so yeah there you go all right boom two hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. poof <laughs> but look at this tractor you guys oh uh, you know what we're gonna have to repair this thing too that's gonna cost some money here let's turn this one off it's 28 26 percent down Listen to that thing, man. Listen to that engine purr. Ooh, neat. Okay. Fancy schmancy. I don't have my head tracker turned on, so I'm just using the mouse right now. Okay. Um. It does turn a little bit differently. It's it's very. Uh, well, you know, it's a track. It turns like a track-driven vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much is this going to cost us to repair it? Oh, only 3100 bucks. That's not that bad. Okay, cool. So now it's fully repaired. And we got ourselves a monster of a tractor, ladies and gentlemen. That is cool. Very cool. Um, well, we're going to have to figure out where we're going to park all of these. Well, we have room, actually. We can move stuff over. Yeah, we ha we actually do have room. Usually what I'll, I do is I park my tractors from largest to smallest, going from left to right. Um, so, we just got to move all of this stuff over a bit. Let's actually take the pickup truck all the way out for the moment. park him in his old spot for now oh I finally remember to uh, change OG's clothes too <laughs> he was wearing that case outfit for like three years I don't know how long it actually was but it was a long time I just never think about it, you know. And when I finally did think about it, I was doing off-camera stuff, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go change his clothes, because otherwise I'll keep forgetting. All right. Well, we definitely are a Fint shop. That wasn't by design, and there's nothing wrong with that. I like the Fint tractors, actually. It's just kind of the way things turn out with the, the sales and stuff. Okay, that's good. In terms of just design of tractor, uh, the JCB has always been my favorite. But there's only two. There's a, a large and a medium, and you can't customize them, at least not engine-wise. So you're kind of limited from that standpoint. But I like the way they look, and they are the fastest tractor in the game, too. Though my Vario, my 900 Vario, is also a very, probably this, this tractor here is probably the second fastest tractor in the game. So when you're doing a lot of back and forth hauling and stuff, that definitely makes a difference. All right, and then we'll put our original tractor, the good old McCormick which we still use right here and we still have plenty of room for the pickup truck very cool so yeah uh, like I said we're gonna speed things up here um, the cereal factory is probably our last major purchase that we're gonna do besides you know, maybe, you know, some more fields. 
and we'll get that up and running and then you know once that's you know once that's done and we we get uh, production from that going uh, then I think we're we're gonna be pretty much ready to officially wrap up Elm Creek here and move on to bigger and better things um okay so let's see here we are in August and um, here is our finances for August so we just dropped a whopping two hundred forty-eight thousand dollars on that tractor. Uh, Twenty thousand dollars in vehicle running costs. Eleven thousand in vehicle leasing costs. Production the same. Uh, we sold nineteen thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars in products. That's from the greenhouse, though, because I don't think we sold anything else. And it's just yeah, it's only August first. Actually, you know what we need to be looking at? Well, here, let's finish this out. Well, no, let's not finish that out. I'm, we shouldn't be looking at that yet because we're not at the end of the month. It's been several days since I last recorded because of the holidays. So I'm trying to get my head back in the game here. Um, let's look at the crop calendar. So we're going to be able to harvest our corn in October or November. So if we plan on purchasing the cereal factory within the next couple of months, um, you know, then we can harvest the corn and then we can get the production going on it. Cause again, I'm just going to purchase, I'm just going to buy the honey and the raisins for it. Now, if that turns out to be incredibly expensive to do, we might need to rethink, uh, the honey part of it anyways. So we'll just see how that goes. I'm not sure, you know, how that's going to turn out until we do it. So we're going to need to replant our grain fields either next month or in October. And we did wheat last time, so we'll probably switch back to barley again for those fields. And let's see what else. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of really where we're at as far as that goes. All right, let's see. I don't think we're going to sell anything in August, but let's look anyway uh, with our products. One thing I was thinking about doing was purchasing... Uh, field 69, um, it has a crop of sugar beets on it. I don't think we really need them, but because it already has the crop on it, then what I would do is I would combine it with 68, and this would just be one big monster field that we'd probably plant either corn or oats on. And I'm still, I still have my eye on 72, uh, field 70, or farmland, actually it's farmland 13. Uh, for us to potentially purchase as well. Because I just want, you know, a couple of really big fields for corn and oats for the cereal factory. But we already have 25, though. 25 is, is actually a pretty good-sized field, especially after we uh, expanded it. So one thing I guess we could do is we could save these two for grain, for our grain mill and our chickens, and then use 68 for oats and 25 for corn or vice versa so the, you know there's a couple options there I just kind of have to kind of figure out you know what what makes the most sense i guess for us to do um anyway let's see here we want to um look and see if there's anything we want to sell in august i don't think there is off the top of my head but let's just look anyways uh, we need to go back to this okay so october's eggs wool um Milk is, is really high in September, and we have 24,000 liters stored up. we got all these wood chips that we're going to sell in January and make some pretty decent money off of. We're going to sell straw in December. Flour, bread, cake, butter, cheese. Yeah, none of that's good in August. And um, sugar, we've already sold and made pretty good money off of it. And chocolate. Okay, yeah, so I don't think there's really anything more for us to do, guys, in August. I think I'm going to go ahead and push on through into September. Uh, we will need to do our third hay cutting, yep, I think, in September. So we'll have to get that going, and it looks like there's a couple of products that we can sell in September, too. So uh, I will see you in September. All right, guys, it is September 1st, so we have uh, some farm chores to do. Uh, I've got to get the uh, greenhouses filled up with seed, and I'll probably top off their water and manure 
at the same time, but I'll, I'll do that off camera because that's going to take a long time to do anyway. Uh, we got a bunch of eggs to pick up with the chickens. The cows are going to need some straw and uh, a bunch of milk has accumu accumulated, which we're going to sell, I believe, because the dairy still has plenty of milk. Have some wool to pick up there too. And um, there, let's take a look at the sales. Um, there is a, a lizard uh, or a TARDIS M trailer, a forage wagon for sale. So we're going to buy this and we're going to return our, our newest one that we're leasing. Uh, this only has 16 months on it. So let's just do that right now. We want to make sure that it has an additive tank on it. And um, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, the game's just remembering the last colors that I used. In fact, hold on, let's go to our least items. So this one is 42 months. Oh, we must have leased these both at the same time. Okay. Um, all right, so what I need to do then, since I can't really tell which one's which, is why don't we return this one? Okay, and then we're going to run over to the shed that has these and see if it's the JCB one or the Fent one that I just sold. Or or the New Holland one. And one what I'm talking about is the colors because I, I changed the colors to match the tractors that I usually use on them. And it's just, it's just for fun. It's not necessary, of course, but... Okay, so we, we did sell the, the Fent one. Okay, so what we're going to do is go into the sale. And uh, we want the rim colors to also be Fent. And it's got the additive tank. And I think everything else can stay the way that it is. That's $28,000. There we go. All right, so we own now two of our three forage wagons. And we're still leasing to own the third one. All right, cool. That takes care of that. Um, now we're going to have some things to sell. So, oopsie. I think, in fact, I think milk is one of the things. Let's double check that again. If we go here. Oh, well, maybe not milk. I thought milk was high in September the last time we looked at it, but maybe not. Um, it's going to be much higher in January. So, Okay, never mind. The the price, you know, these prices do of course change. So let's see, we're in September, so not milk. None of that stuff. Flour, bread, cake. Cake and butter and cheese. Those were high in September, but now that's a drop and it's higher in December and January. Well, maybe we aren't going to sell anything in September then. What we could do, I suppose, is we could wait until uh, we could let another day or two go by and see if that changes anything. Uh, let's look at the crop calendar again. So we are in September. That means that the where's corn? Okay, yeah, we still have to wait till October before we can start harvesting our corn. Um, so I think we're going to wait also then on the cereal factory for that too. Because there's not much point in buying it now and uh, without the corn to put into it okay well um yeah i guess i guess that's really where we're at then uh we don't have really have anything to sell you know what i think i'll do though is we got to get our hay cut um but we could cut the hay on september 1st or 3rd and see if the market changes. I'll tell you what, let's advance let's advance to September 2nd and just see if anything changes with the prices. There's not really any harm in you know waiting one or two more days before we do our hay. We have plenty of silage to keep the biogas plant going. That's the important thing. Uh, oh, you know what though? I do need to take slurry over there. Maybe we should do that first. Yeah, I'll, let me run some slurry over to the biogas plant before we advance a day. Because that's just going to 
turn into more money for us. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to um, take this the slurry down to the biogas plant, and then I'm going to sleep until tomorrow, and I'll bring you guys back tomorrow, and we will see if uh, if the prices have changed. All right, guys, it is September 2nd, and uh, the milk price prices have come back up. They're still not at their peak, uh, but they're definitely are up from yesterday. So the highest price there is seven fifty four, and we could sell it for seven sixty one to Mama Joe's Farmers Market. So that's a pretty good price. I think we're gonna go ahead and and sell the milk. So let's go drop off our forage wagon here. Um, actually, you know what? We're gonna we need we're gonna need to use this for the hay anyway. So I guess we don't really need to drop it off. I'm just gonna park it over here for now. Whoops. Um, are you gonna disconnect? Hello. It's not giving me the option to disconnect it. Okay, that is weird. Um, I guess that means we're going to have to reset it. So let's grab. Uh, we can reset the pickup, I guess. Is there everyone. Oh. <laughs> It left the thingy here. There we go. Now, now we got it off there. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay. Um. Uh, you know what? Because this was a glitch, I'm just gonna use super strength and carry this back to the pickup truck. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Um. Anyway, we'll go grab and sell that milk to Mama Joe's Farmers Market, and then uh, after that, we'll see where we are. I don't think, actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go into, uh, I'm not going to go into September 3rd. All right, do I have to be in the truck for this to work? I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've attached this thing. So does it just... Maybe we have to get out to do it. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah, I think we'll... Let, let's get started with the hay, actually. Um, and then, then we'll do the... The milk after the hay is underway. I haven't been leasing those... Crone big M's with the hitch the last two times because it's it costs forty thousand dollars to lease those things and that's a lot of money. So you know I just I'm just been doing it with this. It takes a little bit longer but it saves us a lot of money. So, uh, but if one of those crones with the hitch comes up on sale, we are absolutely buying it. No doubt about it, man. So we'll get this guy started over here. Okay, let's bring up course play. <clears throat> we want to load field uh, spiral hay right there. Load course, activate, and uh, first waypoint. Okay. And we'll let him get started on the hay, and then after he makes a couple passes, we'll get a forage wagon going behind him to pick it up. Looking good. Okay. Let's go sell some milk. Jump in our pickup truck and hook up to the milk trailer and make some money. Nice thing about it too is it's right at Mama Joe's Farmer's Market. In fact, I think that's we've been selling our milk there quite a bit recently because she has good prices for us on the milk. really need to smooth that out there a little bit. I keep meaning to do that and don't think about it until I drive over it. 
and get a whiplash and then it's like I should smooth that out sometime well that time has come just a lot of a couple of berms there need to be chilled out a bit It's probably an improvement. Yeah, definitely an improvement. Okay. My trailer's drifting over to the left a little bit. All right, let's load this thing up with milk. We probably will, we might have enough to fill this tanker completely, which will be the first time we've ever filled it all the way up with milk, I think. Look at that, 32,000 liters of milk. Awesome. Okay. Get some lights on. Oh, yeah, this is, <laughs> it's, it's a bit unstable. We better keep, the, keep our speed down. My truck was starting to drift. Yeah, it's, it's kind of wobbling back and forth there. That's funny. Ooh, ah. Okay. So what we get. Uh, we also have another 7,100 liters in there. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Had a bit, a bit of a bit of a cough here, right after the New Year. <clears throat> Twenty-four thousand four hundred and three dollars. That is good. That is really good. Okay. Let's go grab that other seven thousand liters. We might as well sell that too, since the dairy should have plenty of milk. In fact, let's just double check that. I'm sure that it does. Oh yeah, it's got 24,000 liters. It's got plenty of milk. Look at that lush grass hay. I love it. I use this, <clears throat> this bridge a lot, so I was thinking about swapping it out for one of those larger bridges that Alien Jim has in his mod. I've been using them on uh, Silver Run. All right, so we made almost 30 grand off of our milk. I don't think milk is a separate thing in the ledger, is it? Maybe it is. Let's see. Sold milk. Yes, it is. $29,870. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. All right. Fantastic. Um, You know, since I have this tanker hooked up, I think I'm going to just keep it connected because I, I, I'm going to top all the water off in the greenhouses in addition <coughs> excuse me, to the seed and the manure. Uh, but, uh, as mentioned, I, I'm going to do all of that off camera because it just it's kind of mundane and it takes a really long time to do. So guys, I think I'm going to let you go here and uh, I'll get the hay, the hay taken care of and then we will move into October and the plan at this point will be for us to... Um, back here so I can fill the water. Uh, the plan will be for us to harvest the corn and get the cereal factory going and I'm excited to do that and I think what we're going to do is we're going to put the cereal factory right here directly to the right of where I'm at and convert this little field uh, over to more of our industrial yard or at least you know enough of it for the cereal factory to to be placed down. So that is the plan stand for the next episode. Guys I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did please Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and share out the video, and we will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.